It's the end of February, and there's all kinds of interesting things happening under my lights. I have some larger plants, I have seedlings growing, but what I'd like to do in this video is to focus on the seedlings. We're not going to talk about germinating seeds too much. We're mostly interested in the larger seedlings. What can we learn about plants by looking at these seedlings? I'll also discuss a few other things as we go along. For example, I have some nice cuttings to show you. As many of you know, I like to grow using the baggy method. And I have a video about that, and I'll put a link at the end of this video so that you can watch it. I normally start my seeds in January, February, and I put them in the baggies. Some will go into the fridge because they need cold stratification. They stay in there for two or three months, and then they come out, and I hope they germinate in time for spring. The warm germinators, I just put in the baggies and let them sit on my desk. And then I hope those germinate sometime in February, March, so that I have good-sized seedlings by the time they can go outside. That's the plan, but the seeds don't always do what I want them to do. So now I'm sitting here in June, and I still have baggies with seeds in them that haven't done anything. What do you do then? Well, I don't really want seeds germinating in June, July, and August because I end up with tiny little seedlings that I have to overwinter. And that's difficult for the plants and difficult for me. So somewhere around June 1st, I want all seeds to stop germinating. So what I do with my baggies, I move them all into the fridge. The ones that haven't germinated so far, there's a couple explanations for that. One is that all those seeds are dead. They're never going to germinate. But I don't know that. The second explanation is that they need a cold treatment. They need stratification before they'll germinate. So putting them into the fridge will do that for me. The third possibility is that there are a lot of seeds that germinate over a long period of time. So if you have 10 seeds, two or three might germinate this year. The rest need a second cold period, and they won't germinate until next year or even the following year. Some seeds are just very slow. And by giving them cycles of warm and cold, you will eventually get germination. Now, I don't know which of these applies to my bunch of seeds, so they all go into the fridge for the summer. So now I'm sitting here in summer and in fall, and I've got these boxes of seeds. And you can see one of the real benefits of this baggy method. This box holds about 20 different kinds of seeds. Can you imagine the space I would need if these were all potted up? That's an impossible way to grow seeds. But here, these seeds take up no space at all. One thing that I have learned over the years is that some seed germinate in the cold. It always surprises me how many of these will actually germinate in a cold refrigerator. So I can't just leave these sit there. I check them about every two weeks for germination. And I did that this morning. And guess what? I found one that germinated. This is a package of Iris bludomii. I have no idea what that iris is. I got the seed at least a year ago, and I've been moving it in and out of the fridge several times. It's finally germinated. But out of these 20 seeds, I only have one germination. One little seed has a tiny little root. So what I'm going to do is take that one seed, pot it up. I mean, this is a pretty rare iris that I'm probably never going to see again. So that's an important seedling. I'll put it under lights and grow it and then get it in the garden this year. The rest of the seeds I could put back in the fridge, but in this case, I think I'll leave them out because it's already around the 1st of March and it's time to get these guys germinating. I also have this package here. Now these are peony seeds, and peonies germinate kind of funny. You keep them warm, and they germinate and make a root, but they won't make any leaves until they get a cold period. So these have been sitting in the fridge for several months now, and the leaves are starting to grow. So it's time to pot these up. We'll talk a bit more about peonies later in this video. So what do I do with all these seeds from last year? Well, around this time of the year, I'll bring them out of the fridge and warm them up. That warming period will trigger some of these seeds to germinate. If they haven't germinated by June 1st, they go back in the fridge. Or if they're getting kind of old, they'll go into the garbage. Now let's have a look at some real seedlings. These are tomato seedlings. Now you'll notice they're quite leggy. 
These plants were grown for a special experiment, a special video I made for you guys. I'm not going to use these in the garden. It's really too early to start tomatoes in my zone 5 garden. But I kept the plants to show you something. If you look at the leaves, you'll notice that the first set of leaves are different than the rest. The first set of leaves is the cotyledon leaves. They're called that because all of the energy for those leaves came out of the seed pod. They're not true leaves. In fact, the true leaf here is only at the top, and it looks like a tomato leaf. The cotyledon leaves look quite different. And in fact, most seeds that make cotyledon leaves have leaves that all look the same. It's very hard to tell one seedling from another. It's not until they make their true leaf that you see what the plant really looks like. Let's have a look at some other cotyledons. These are seedlings of Acer crudatum. You can see that the top leaf kind of looks like a maple leaf, but the cotyledons look very similar to the tomato plant. This is Liatris cylindrosea. The cotyledon leaves again look very similar to the tomato plant, but the true leaf looks more like a grass. This is a tree peony seedling. It germinated about two months ago and made the first set of true leaves. Now this also has cotyledon leaves, but you really can't see them. The leaves stay inside the seed. So if we look down near the soil, you'll see the seed still sitting there. And the cotyledon leaves are inside of that seed. So they never pop out. So the first leaves you see on this plant are actually true peony leaves. This is one of the cutest seedlings you'll ever see. It's a pine tree. These guys don't make cotyledon leaves. They do make a true set of leaves, and then they stop growing. Now, if you're growing this, you might be concerned because nothing's going to happen all summer long with this plant. It's just gonna sit here like this. But you don't need to be concerned. Think about how pine trees and other evergreens grow in the wild. They pretty much sit there all winter long, and then in early, late spring, they start to grow and they have this growth spurt. And then they stop. And then nothing happens for the rest of the summer and the fall. The seedlings do the same thing. They germinate, they make this set of leaves, and then they sit there. Underground, they're developing a larger root system and the leaves are making food for the plant to get ready for next year. So not all seeds will keep growing larger and larger throughout the summer. Now I showed you this pot of Acer Cadatum. This is an Asian maple tree. And the leaves in this pot all look pretty normal. And in fact, I have two pots like this. The leaves are nice and green. They're developing properly. I also have this other pot with a single Acer Cadatum in it. This was the first seedling to germinate in the batch. So it's actually the oldest plant, but it hasn't really grown nearly as well as the others. And if you have a close look at the leaves, they're quite yellow. Now both have been grown in the same soil, under the same lights, same temperature. You would expect them all to be the same. Now this is something you have to understand about seeds. Each seed is a different organism they're not going to all be the same. In any batch of seeds, there's always a possibility of getting a mutation. Sometimes they're runts and they just don't grow very well. You'll have a tray of seedlings and they're all six inches tall and there'll be one that's only four inches tall. Other times you get leaves that are a little different, maybe a different color, different shape. So these are mutations. Now that happens with all organisms. So you just have to understand that that's a possibility with your seeds. Now there are two things to do here. One is you take the runt and you throw it out, thinking, well, it's not going to be a good plant. The other possibility is that this might be a really special plant. If you go to the nursery and you see some new variation of a plant, someone at some point found an unusual seedling, but they were smart enough to grow that seedling and it turned out to be better than the regular kind. So what I tend to do is I usually grow these guys for a while and see how they do. And then I can evaluate them, and maybe this is a really special variation of Acer Codatum. I might be able to introduce this into the horticulture world. That's not likely to happen. The chances are that you end up with a crappy plant, but who knows? It's fun to try. Here's another interesting seedling. This is a Robinia. 
That's a tree. But the seed came from a very special cultivar of that tree called freesia. So freesia is a tree that has very yellow colored leaves. And that's very popular in horticulture. So someone grew this yellow leaf version of Robinia, collected the seeds, and made them available in the seed exchange. And here's one of the seedlings I got. It's quite green looking. I don't see any yellow leaves here. And this is quite common. When you collect seed from mutations, many times the seedlings are going to be green. They're going to revert back to the parent plant. This is especially true of a lot of the variegated plants. So people will collect seed from a nice variegated plant and they end up being normal green. Or there's a miniature plant. You have a small version of that plant. You collect seed from it. The seedlings are almost always going to be large again. In most cases, most of these mutations revert back to the parent plant. But in this case, I did get lucky. Three seedlings germinated. Two of them are green like this, but one of them is nice and yellow. Now, I haven't seen the actual parent plant, so I don't know how yellow those leaves are. But when you see these side by side, clearly the one is much yellower than the other one. Since this tree is not that special as a green form, I'll probably get rid of the green seedlings and only keep the yellow one. But just remember, most seeds from mutations don't turn out like that mutation. They'll revert back to the parents. Here's another interesting seedling. This is a Clematis alpina. Now these are miniature clematis that bloom very early in the season and I really like the alpinus for that reason. These guys take forever to germinate. So I usually start them in the fall as soon as I get the seed and they just sit around my desk because most of them are warm germinators. Which means they germinate at all different times of the year. Usually when I don't want them to germinate. So these guys germinated before Christmas. And now I have these big plants. The problem with most clematis is that they're vines, and so they cling to things. And this thing just grows all over my other seedlings and wraps itself around everything. So what I do with something like this is I'll give it a cut here. I cut the top off, keep the bottom. What this does is it makes this part branch more, which is good for the plant anyways. And it's a lot easier to maintain under lights. Then in spring, when it goes outside, I'll put it somewhere where it can climb, and then I don't care how tall it gets. Looking forward to see what this one looks like. If you've never grown alpinus, give them a try. They're shorter plants, they're very hardy, and they bloom in late spring. I've got a couple other things to talk to you about that are not seedlings. In the fall, I went out and bought one of these hardy hibiscus for the garden. The reason I bought it was that the leaves were really, really dark red, and I thought, that would look great in a garden. As I was moving the pots around, I broke off one of the stems. I thought, oh crap, now what do I do? So I stuck it in some water, and it rooted really easily. So here I'm sitting in October with a rooted cutting. What the heck do you do with it? I can't put it outside, it's not going to survive the winter. So I thought, oh, I'll pot it up and grow it under lights and see how it does. Well, it did really well. This is what it looks like today. But if I go back two months, it was about this tall. And the flowers were the size of my hand. Well, it was just getting too tall for under my lights. So what do you do? Well, I hacked it off. I was pretty sure it would put out a new shoot. I was kind of hoping for a shoot to come out from down here. But what it's decided to do is put a shoot here. And that's okay. Once it's in the garden for a couple years, it'll become a bush anyways with lots of new growth. As long as it's making leaves, it's surviving and it's happy. Now, the other thing that was very interesting about this plant is that you'll notice the leaves are all green. And even the initial growth was green. So under lights, this plant is growing very green leaves. Outside, it grows deep red leaves. Now, because this is a cutting, the genetics in here are exactly the same as the parents. That's different than a seedling. So if I had grown this from seed and got a green leaf, that wouldn't surprise me. 
But the fact that this is a cutting and it's identical to the mother plant, this is a bit of a surprise. The only thing I can think of is that the color of the leaves depends very much on the type of light it gets. My lighting system uses high pressure sodium, which is a very yellow light. That light gives off very little blue, and I suspect that's what's causing the color change. Anyways, it'll be interesting to see what this looks like once I put it outside. Here's another little experiment that worked pretty well. I had a bunch of butterfly bushes near the house, and I just love them because in fall they're just covered with butterflies. But I thought, you know what, I really should have more butterfly bushes out in the back part of the garden. How do you make more? Well, I take cuttings. So I took these cuttings in the fall, probably around October, potted them up, and basically made cuttings in the wintertime. And they're growing just fine. The butterfly bush is really easy to propagate with cutting. And I've even gone out in the garden late November when things are pretty much frozen and taken cutting, and they will still root at that time. If you have a look in here, there's about seven cuttings. Three of them are growing quite nicely. The other three look like they're dead. And that's pretty usual. Some cuttings will work, some don't. So I always try to do five, six different cuttings. The growths aren't great. These are actually sitting on the floor quite a distance from my grow lights. So they're having a bit of a time putting on any leaf. But they're alive, and by springtime they'll go outside. They'll grow much stronger then. These will be fine. So I hope you've enjoyed this visit to my indoor garden. And I hope you learned something about growing plants. I have a lot more videos about starting seeds, and I'll put a link to that playlist at the bottom corner. To the top corner is my most popular video, and that's about growing seeds in baggies. Spring's almost here. It's almost time to get in the garden. Talk to you next time.